Hello everyone, I'm really excited to share that the developers have announced what's coming up in Update 7.3 in Star Wars The Old Republic. While this isn't a full expansion, it's looking to be a pretty interesting update. The main parts that it will include is new story, a new landing area, kind of like a smaller daily area, as well as a cool new flashpoint format and changes to PvP, class changes, economy initiatives, gearing changes, some new cartel market stuff, and lots of events. All of this was announced in a series of posts and a developer live stream, and I've compiled it all together for you here. Let's jump into the news. First off, the story. Without going into any spoilers, if you want some of those, feel free to check out the written version of this guide, which I have linked in the description of this video. The new storyline is going to be called Old Wounds, and it's going to be focusing on a mysterious relic, some ancient Sith, and you know, some of the current characters we've been interested in. We even got a teaser clip, a very, very short bit of cutscene to take a look at, but I don't want to spoil anything for you, so you can watch it on the website if you want. What I do want to talk about is the new Voss area. This new area and landing zone is being added to Voss and is called the Interpreter's Retreat. It has some of the storyline from Old Wounds, but it also has a lot of gameplay. On the test server, we could see that it also had a set of one-time quests that then unlocked repeatable daily missions. For those of you who are familiar with the Knights of the Fallen Empire and Knights of the Eternal Throne expansions, you'll be especially interested to see the aftermath of what happened there on the planet of Voss. In addition to those story quests, as well as these side missions, there does seem to be a nice set of fun exploration and secret-based achievements, there's a bunch of new decorations, and a whole bunch of new armors. This new area, Pilgrim's Retreat, does use a lot of the existing assets of Voss, so it'll seem very familiar, but it is a whole new separate section. You actually fly to it on your ship, and it's not directly connected to the main Voss. It's not quite as big as, say, the new daily area of Brunuk, but it does have a lot of fun stuff to explore. As for the new armors, it's a very interesting new setup. There's 16 new armor sets that you can either get as a full armor set cosmetic drop from the new flashpoint, which is called a Shrine of Silence, or you can buy each piece individually for each of the 16 sets from a vendor in the new area. These armors look like a representation of Voss culture. None of them seem to be 100% new in design, but many are armor sets we did not have access to before and were only for NPCs, or are reskins of existing armor but with unique Voss themed patterns or colors. The new decorations are likewise Voss themed. Now let's talk about the new Flashpoint Shrine of Silence. So Bioware shared some very interesting insight into Flashpoint design when they announced this new Flashpoint. Flashpoints in past updates have often been the capstone of the critical path or main story path, for example the Ruins of No Flashpoint, as both new group content and solo capstone to the story. This new Flashpoint, Shrine of Silence, is a little different and is more like the classic Flashpoints like Red Reaper that has narrative but it is not inherently a part of the critical story path, or the main path. It has story, and it is very narrative relevant, but it's a bit shorter, and it can be played separately from the story, and the structure is a bit different. This is a new way for developers to look at flashpoints. The Shrine of Silence flashpoint is related to the storyline of Old Wounds, but it is not required to play this flashpoint to complete the Old Wounds storyline. You'll be getting a lot of stuff related to what's happening on the new Voss area, the Interpreter's Retreat, but it's much more focused on repeatable group and solo content. It will have story, veteran, and master mode. It's not required to play, but it's there to enhance the story that the developers are trying to tell within the Interpreter's Retreat area. So in the new area that you'll be exploring, there's the Shrine of Contemplation, the Shrine of Judgment, and the Shrine of Silence. These are very important to the Interpreters of Voss when it comes to story. The Shrine of Silence, however, has fallen into disrepair and has stayed that way for years because the Voss say that it's cursed, and the Voss do not want to rebuild it, except for two plucky mystics who then went missing. So you'll be exploring the Shrine of Silence and trying to find out what happened there. What I thought was really cool was that they shared the first boss of this new operation that once again you can play it by yourself or you can play it with a group or even play it in the more difficult master mode. The first boss is the Corrupted Varanticus and it actually has a brand new mechanic called Tantrum that I thought it was really funny that the developer nicknamed it Donut Targeting. It's just something we've never seen before in the game. 
In addition, we got some interesting information about the final boss, the curse, the Sith monstrosity, um, and that in master mode, players will find the curse has the ability to sense your weakness and destroy any players that the boss deems weak. So keeping your party healthy will be integral to your success. Uh, one of the developers said, have a good healer if you want to do master mode. As for PvP, we got to hear a bit about how the medals and attacker and defender points are changing in 7.3. In the previous update, they made some upgrades to the Alderaan Civil War Warzone that made it a lot easier to earn medals if you were actually playing the match right. And focusing on the objectives, they're taking another look at Voidstar, Novari Coast, and Hutball and doing much of the same thing for 7.3, and so far the changes look pretty good. In addition to that, they mentioned that PvP Season 3 will be starting on July 18th and will run for 12 weeks. The current season ends June 20th, so you have a little break in between. The PvP seasons may not necessarily start uh, or end in sync with the update schedule, so this may not come out specifically with 7.3, it might be before or it might be after. And that goes for both Galactic Seasons and PvP Seasons in general from now going forwards. They also showed off one of the PvP Seasons exclusive armor sets while on the livestream. As always, there's a set of class changes to go with everything else that you can see on the forums and read about before the update even comes out. They're currently looking for feedback. Now, this is the thing I personally find the most interesting, if the least fun. The economy initiative changes that are coming up were heavily discussed in the live stream as well as in a bunch of posts, and they're very, very interesting to me. So a system designer for Star Wars The Old Republic discussed the continuation of the credit economy initiative. The biggest notes are that the GTN in the future will be getting a full overhaul, not with 7.3, but sometime afterwards, including lots of new features and a buy order system and market data. So first I'm going to talk about what's coming in 7.3 and then I'm going to talk about the GTN overhaul that's coming later down the road. So in 7.3 the major change is going to be a GTN mail and trade tax change. So in 7.3 they'll be adding a tax or fee to all the different ways credits can be exchanged so there will no longer be a reason to skirt the GTN tax by trading person to person or through the mail. In addition to a tax on credits, some items will also adjust the value of a transaction when transferred via trade, mail, and collect on deposit, aka selling things through the mail, and will be subject to the same fee. Quick and short example, if you want to send a friend 1 million credits, it will cost you 80,000 credits. You'd pay about 1,080,000 credits when I send a mail, and my friend will get the full 1 million. If you're sending a friend 100 million credits, it would cost 8 million credits for the fee. They did also note if you're sending it between your own characters, there's no fee. They also explained that some items initially will have a value associated with them. This is based on their average value on the GTN and some other conversions based on the current economy. Eventually, this will be completely driven by the GTN. So these are the item transaction fees. The primary reason we need to have items that have fees is to limit tax avoidance through the use of barter only trades and prevent folks from moving off of credits entirely to facilitate transactions. And if you're not already familiar with the crazy inflation in Star Wars The Old Republic, this is already currently happening. When a player has a rare item for sale, for example, maybe a cavern varactyle, instead of asking for credits, they will often ask outright for X amount of hypercrates instead. Now here's where it gets especially interesting and very exciting for me as a longtime player. After 7.3, there will be a GTN rehaul, including a whole new suite of features that focus on the Galactic Trade Network, also known as the GTN, where you buy and sell things with other players. Some of the features they mentioned that could be coming up include market information, uh, so you can set your items at fair prices, a commodity order system, so a buy order system similar to Guild Wars 2, where a player can say, I want to buy a this specific chess piece for 5 million credits and someone else can craft it for them and sell it to them immediately without ever having to list it themselves. They're also looking to change the cap, the credit cap of the GTN. So it's currently a billion credits, so it may go up. And the taxes on items sold on the GTN will be on a more progressive scale. I'm really excited as these changes, specifically the GTN overhaul, should make buying and selling anything on the GTN more fun and a lot easier. Whether you're a brand new player who's looking to craft, or you're a longtime player who's looking to buy 10,000 of your favorite crafting material. I'm especially excited to see if this helps revitalize the cosmetic crafting scene. On top of all those changes, we're also getting some gearing changes, and they're surprisingly really positive as far as I can tell. 
The big change is that daily resource matrices, and this is for level 80 characters, aka DRMs, the purple daily material, are being removed from the cost of buying or upgrading gear, so you are no longer required to play daily or heroic areas to upgrade gear you got from flashpoints or operations. Lastly, in 7.3, we're also getting some new Cartel Market item cosmetics as usual. The ones that they showcased on the live stream were the Hermit's Vigil, an Obi-Wan inspired blaster, and the CB2 Briar Pistol, a Cassian Andor inspired blaster. We also took a peek in the collections on the test server and we saw a mount inspired by the Slave 1, as well as two new armor sets, a new lightsaber, which seems to be based on the new storyline, and another mount. Not particularly tied to 7.3, there's also a whole bunch of events going on and coming up. Just so, so many. So first off, the Narshada Nightlife event is confirmed. It won't necessarily be with 7.3 specifically, but it will go live on July 11th, 2023. It will include a new High Roller Skiff mount as well. If you log in before May 18th, you'll also get a free little droid to celebrate May the 4th. Double XP, woohoo! We'll be running May 4th through May 18th for a full two weeks. Don't forget, we have lots of guides about how to take advantage of that. And a collection sale will be running 50% off um, until May 18th, almost all collections items. Pretty much everything except a few outliers is on sale. Like I said at the beginning, this is probably not going to be a huge, huge update when it comes to the story and the content and stuff like that. I've really liked what I've seen about exploring the new boss area, so I'm personally looking forward to that. And I'm really excited about these changes that they're making to gearing, uh, to make life easier for everybody. I can go simplify some of my guides. Um, the credit economy initiative is looking like it's on a really good track. And lots of nice little things across the board. If you want to hear more about what might be coming after 7.3, I've compiled a list on sothrisa.com in the written version of this video. I've linked it in the description. Okay, I've got to know, which of these features are you most looking forward to in 7.3? Let me know in the comments below. I'm a big nerd and I'm excited about the credit changes and economy stuff, but I'd like to hear what you guys like as well. If you want to show your support for this project, both for the huge collection of guides on the website as well as videos, feel free to visit sotarisa.com support. And if you want more videos like this to show up on your YouTube homepage, subscribe to this channel. As always, may the force be with you.